Welcome to the channel, y'all. Today, we're talking about five astrophotography tips that will help elevate your shooting experience, whether you've been shooting astrophotography for years or are just trying to get into it. Stick around. Tip number one. Don't be afraid to crank that ISO, whether you say ISO or ISO. That's a whole debate. Pop your answer down in the comments below. But contrary to shooting during the daytime, ISO or your camera's sensitivity to light, it's actually imperative that you boost this number to really high levels such as 3000, 5000, 6000 depending on your shooting location. If you're shooting astrophotography in an area where there's a decent amount of light pollution, I would recommend starting around the 1600 to 2500 range. But if you're somewhere super, super dark, you're gonna need that extra light sensitivity. So crank it up. I have a video that breaks down a simple editing process to help reduce noise as well. So fear not, your images will still come out beautiful. Tip number two, images of the night sky and the night sky alone are, are really beautiful, but take your image to the next level by adding a foreground element. Whether this is a cemetery, an abandoned car, or just a really nice tree, adding that foreground element really adds a sense of scale to your Milky Way photo, as well as just gives it a human touch. Tip number three is use the delay shutter built into most cameras these days. Simply pressing the shutter can introduce shake in your camera, which ultimately leads to blurry images. So to help your camera produce crystal clear pinpoint stars, I recommend using a two to five second delay or picking up a remote shutter cable. At the time of filming this video, this was $23 on Amazon. One thing to note is do be sure to take note of your camera manufacturer because the plug will be camera specific. Tip number four, be sure to check the status of the moon. And this sounds a little silly, but a full moon, even down to a half moon, can absolutely kill a Milky Way outing. Reason being the excess light that comes from a full to half moon overpowers the brightness of the Milky Way core. So do yourself a favor, Google it, check photo pills, and make sure you're working with either a new moon to I would say a quarter moon. And tip number five, to help bring your Milky Way photos to the next level, it's important to make sure you have pinpoint stars. And in order to do that, you need to do a little bit of calculations. However, there's a trusty app that makes this super simple. Can't recommend downloading photo pills enough. And within the app, there's actually a section called Spot Stars. In the Spot Stars section, you simply need to input your focal length, your maximum aperture. We'll leave the declination to zero. We want to set our star sharpness to accurate. Now you'll notice, you'll see two results. So the 500 rule was the trusted, tried and true method of calculating sharp stars back in the day. Today's standards with digital cameras, the calculations have changed a bit. So we now use what's called the NPF rule. Now, even at 16 millimeters f2.8, so super wide, super fast, you're looking at 6.2 seconds to get a really, really sharp star. So this goes back to point number one. You're gonna need to really ramp that ISO up to make sure you're capturing enough light in these shorter, exposure times. Now the trick here is whenever you get to lo your location, pop in your calculation and take a test shot. Make sure you're checking the corners of your images. That's where typically you're gonna see any coma or chromatic aberration or star trailing. Once you've pushed your camera to the limit, you can document that exposure time for future outings. But this is a great tool to get you started. And just because you stuck around, and if you're a Sony shooter, I've got a bonus tip for you. Be sure to program what's called bright monitoring into one of your quick keys on the back of your camera. Now what bright monitoring does is it actually ramps up the ISO to like 100,000 or something ridiculous so that your scene is actually visible on your viewfinder. One of the more challenging thing with astrophotography, particularly 
when you're introducing a foreground element or framing the scene is actually knowing where to point the camera in the dark. So using bright monitoring actually lights up the sky for you so you're able to frame your photo right from the get-go. Thanks for tuning in. I hope those five tips were useful for you. There are so many more beyond this, but again, I think these will help you to not only elevate your current skills, but also help you get started if you're just a beginner. Be sure to check out my other videos about astrophotography. Pop any questions or comments below. And if you have tips other than this, what are your top five? Let me know as well in the comments. But thank you for shoot. Thank you for shooting. Thank you for shoot. Thank you for shooting. Thank you for watching. Be sure to hit the subscribe button for more content like this. We'll catch you on the next one. Wishing you clear skies.